This is a real thought on Christmas with the Cranks. Um, this is not a movie you want to see around Christmas time. <laughs> there are probably worse Christmas films out there, but man, is this, it scraping bottom of the This barrel. is tough. Uh, and here's the funny thing. When... Uh, when the trailer came out for this movie, I thought this was a clever idea, and I still think it's a clever idea. Uh, I never read the book. I don't know if the book's darker or smarter or whatever. Um, but the idea of somebody that decides they don't want to celebrate Christmas, and the town is so offended by this that they constantly try to force them to celebrate this holiday that's about peace and love, and they do it through hostility, is that that's such a smart idea, and it's so clever, and there's so many good jokes you can get, and so much great commentary, but they got it the other way around. They make the people skipping Christmas look like the villains, and that's not what it's supposed to be. The neighborhood is supposed to look like the villains. I have never... It, it takes a special talent. A special talent to make a movie without one redeeming character. One character that you just don't want to just die on screen. This movie somehow did it. I can't think of a single character that I liked. They the, all were assholes. Or idiots, or, yeah, no, mostly just assholes. Uh, the daughter is going to work for uh, some sort of charity or something like that, which is like, okay, she's doing something good, but then she's like, I met a guy I haven't seen in years, and now we're getting married and stuff, and it's like, what the hell is this? Like, I mean, she's she not an boring. asshole, but she's just I, a dummy. <laughs> I mean, they just didn't set this up at yeah, all. Every single okay. I can't think of a film in recent memory I've seen with this many unlikable characters, all yeah. assembled in one place. It's... Like, I know people rat on Jurassic World, and it's like, oh, I wish they would all die. Sit through this movie <laughs> and tell me that again. <laughs> like, Jurassic World, the characters seem like saints compared to this film. When, um... Yeah, so, the, you know, I, I saw this when it came actually a DVD I was paying a night at... Uh, actually, can I just say this movie would have been made better if a T-Rex started running through that suburban neighborhood and just it, ate yes. all of them up? Thank you. Yes, that would be amazing. You could say that. You may, uh, you may continue. Thank you very much. Nice. And that was worth the interruption because I really like that visual. Um, but I saw this when it came to DVD. Uh, I was spending the night at a friend's house when I was commuting to, to college and they had it on and I was sleeping on the couch so I had no choice. I had to watch it. I heard it wasn't that good, but this is also at a time when critics would just, well, a lot of critics, sometimes they'll just hate something that actually is good, but they'll nitpick it and they won't get good review, like Hotel Transylvania or something like that. Or they'll just take a movie that's just meh and really blow it out of proportion. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I thought maybe this is one of those movies because the, the idea seems so smart and so good that it can't possibly be messed up this much. And oh, watching honey. it, oh honey, yeah, no, watching oh. it, like while I'm trying to sleep on the couch, and this couple, they were like half making out. This is clearly just a movie to put on while we make out, whatever. Even though I was still in the room, um, but and they're watching it, and just not one laugh. I remember my my roommate came in during the scene where the guy's gloves get caught in the window, and then Jimmy Lee Curtis and goes ah like that, and then it cuts away, and he just went. Hilarious! <laughs> it was just so clearly not funny and was so plain for anyone to see. Uh, no, you know what? I take it back. There's one likable character in this movie. You, you know who I'm talking about? The tanning booth? No. Uh, the guy, I always forget his name. Forgive me, I forget his name, but I love this guy. He's Max from the Muppet movie. Oh, Max. He's, Max. Yeah, he's from What's Up, Doc? Uh, and he, he plays Short these, Circuit, he was in Short yeah, Circuit Yeah, he plays well. all these bit roles, and you can just... Finding Nemo, he was one of the fish in that. Oh, was he? Yeah, I, I thought so. That. Yeah, I well, thought he was... I, I, I'm, for, I'm blanking on this guy's name, I, I really apologize because he, he's so cool, but every single time I see him in the movie, it's clear like he's just... He seems like a guy... I got this figured out. I, I just life everything. I got figured out. I'm just gonna kind of do my own thing and, he, and have he's fun. He's having fun in whatever role he's in. Yeah. Okay. I'll give you. I'll give you that. It's still a poorly written character. Oh yeah. No. That but makes no but sense he, at the end when he's like, "And I'm Santa Claus." Yeah. Ah. But but he well, brought so much to that. And I, I saw yeah. him as the White Rabbit in this version of uh, Alice in Wonderland. He was like the best weirdest White Rabbit yeah. you've ever seen. And I just love this guy and anything he's in. And when I saw him, I'm kind of like, oh no. 
no, they got you too, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. But it was like, it, it was kind of like if you're caught in this really terrible situation, but then a familiar face comes through, like, it's okay. Okay, I'm I'll give here. you, okay, I'll give you that. So one. <laughs> God damn it, I want to hate yeah. this movie completely. Yeah, I, I forgot about him, but he's just so cool. Um, so, yeah, so that guy is really cool. Go, see if you can find his other stuff. Even in fucking, uh, what's that Hulk Hogan, Mr. Nan, wait, Mr. Nanny, was that it? Yeah, right, yeah, uh, Mr. Nanny, he's the father yeah, the of that, father and that, that is yeah. a nothing role, nothing at all, but if you watch him, we didn't really bring it up in the review, but if you watch him, he's just really funny, and, you know, with these lines that aren't really funny, he just kind of makes them funny because he's doing his own weird thing, okay, and he's we, just so much fun. Can we stop giving positive things to talk okay, about okay, with this film? Enough, fair enough. Let's get back to the subject. Um, this movie sucks! So, uh, I, you know, I, I should bring up just a... All the people that were sending, like, thankful emails <laughs> for the ending of this review, I, the thank you so much. Uh, like, everyone was just like, man, I was having a rough time, but that that really helped, that helped pull through and stuff like that. And, again, I think that's part of the fun is that even when you watch something as terrible as Christmas with the Cranks, like, you can make a point through means that... I don't feel you can do as well in a written review. I mean, this is why video reviews are, are so fascinating, and you do characters, and you do stories and songs and stuff, because you can really get this stuff out in a different way that can actually affect people. You know, it isn't just saying, I think this, and so should you. Uh, you know, you can actually kind of make this impact, and we got a ton of emails on that, so uh, but really thanks for that, because I don't think I ever... Maybe on Facebook I said, I can't remember, but yeah, just to all the people that wrote nice it's emails appreciated. about that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Particularly after sitting through that. I was going to say, I probably would appreciate more emails saying, Ooh. I'm sorry you had to sit through <laughs> but, um But yeah, but again, through all that miserable stuff, you can find kind of, you can find good lessons and you can find sort of this positivity to learn from and stuff. So even through something as tough as Christmas with the Cranks, you can turn it into something positive. Yeah, they're all unlikable. The two main characters are unlikable as well. The whole town's unlikable. And then at the end, the way they try to shoehorn in this happy ending, like, oh, this is what it was all about. And, and I'm yeah. like, and somehow oh, Santa this Claus... This town treated them like shit. Yeah. For weeks, and now all of a sudden it's just like, oh, well, like, we're all coming together. And I'm just, I, oh. I was kind of with Tim Allen, honestly. I'm like, no, he's absolutely correct. These two-faced assholes now yeah. got exactly what they wanted. Which was to have this house do its Christmas snowman thing or whatever. And, like, I, I don't know. Like, when Jamie Lee Curtis and, and uh, Tim Allen have that fight, I, I'm i just completely with Tim Allen. I'm like, he's absolutely right. These people are insane. They're psychotic. They're and, and the absolute epitome of every fucking thing that is wrong with Christmas, as much as I love Christmas. You know, this looks like this looks like the prequel to Saving Christmas. Uh, that's kind of what it feels like. Like, you know, oh, someone doesn't want to celebrate Christmas. Well, let's show those assholes through force. You know, and, and then Jamie Lee like, well, it's always about you, isn't it? And I'm like, he's completely right. And, and then they really try to go that extra mile by having them not give to charities. He's like, no, no, it's a total boycott. Like, why? That, there's no reason to do that. It's just to make Because I need to be an, like asshole an asshole to make this, to shoehorn this stupid yeah. moral in. Well, and but here's the thing, too. Eat uh, the moral! No. Eat it! And here, here's the thing, too. You know, I, if they're trying to make Tim Allen look like the bad guy, he's not a good bad guy. No. I, he's too likable. And there's been yeah. several times where they try to make him look like a jerk in a even, movie, and it I, never I works. Like, I like Galaxy Quest, but even in that film, it... I, I can buy the ego, but even then, it's like a little hard to be like, "Oh, he's a total jerk," and I'm like, "But I like Tim Allen." Like, yeah, it's no, just a little hard. He, to be. Like, know, it's it works best if you work with him. I think Galaxy Quest worked. I think Buzz Lightyear works because obviously, like, Home Improvement yeah, works. Yeah, it's it's more about the. I think he's really good at doing just sort of goofy sort of ego, but the sort of just mean spiritedness they tried to put him through in this movie, I'm like, man, talk about miscasting. There's a lot of movies, he's, I feel like, they try to make him a jerk, and maybe he's kind of down for that, too. Maybe he didn't like... Maybe he got sick of the Home Improvement character. It's like, no, I want to be a legit a-hole, you know? I want to go through and be kind of the bad guy, but it's... He's just too <laughs> likable, and he's not very yeah. good at being a bad guy. Um, you know, and it's kind of an interesting criticism. Again, guys, it's like, you're too nice. I, you're too likable. No, e. Emmett Walsh was, oh, that the, fucking dude. was the asshole. But no, no, it like, turns out he was the hero the whole time who deserved a break. My wife has cancer. Therefore, it gives me a right to be a total dick yep. to everybody. Like, it, I, 
Uh, like, yeah, yeah it's, it's it's one of those. Things. And he he pulled it off because I'm like, man, I hate this guy. But then but then but at the end, it's like, like him. oh well, his wife has cancer, therefore. I'm okay, but he's still an asshole. Like what? I'm sorry. Yes, cancer sucks. That doesn't mean I can't be like, well, but you're still being a dick to everybody. You know what like, would have worked better if if they really wanted to try this? I think if they did, um, if they had a real like, maybe the reason he was kind of a jerk was because. <sighs> his wife had cancer and he was frustrated and stuff yeah, like that. But, but it, by making the rest of the town a-holes yeah. acting the same he and then being like, like it, here, it, you deserve this. There was nothing like that was he was incredible. a douchebag to begin with. Yeah. That the cancer was just incidental. Yeah. <laughs> like, there, there's little to no connection at all. He plays it well. Like, the, I just love E. Emma Walsh's voice and that way he speaks with that drawl of his, like, he, it, like it, there is something kind of slimy and... You see, E. Emma Walsh, even though I'm sure he's a very nice guy and everything, Thing. That's a guy who has the exact opposite problem of Tim Allen. You need to make him likable, and it's very hard it's because hard he to plays make him, yeah. the jerk so, so well. well. And I'm sure he's a nice guy. Going, I, mean, yeah, I always think of like, seems yeah. like a nice guy, but it's like he plays an asshole so well. I always and you still just so to this naturally day, whenever he pops up on screen, just flash to blood simple. <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's what I think of too. <laughs> I mean, no, it's like, down here in Texas. Like, I'm like he's just gonna sneak into somebody's room and shoot them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, of course, that, that great Jimmy Lee Curtis performance, which I can sum up oh. in this impression. Honey, honey, it's just a, it's just a snowman, honey. That's not. Oh. It's like what a, and that's a good actress. That's a good act and a funny actress. Who, by the way. Did tear her much better in Halloween. <laughs> like, so she's proven she can do scared really well. And True Lies proved she can do comedy really well. So it's amazing that she can't do either in this fucking film. Um, so, yeah, God, anything else to say about this piece of shit? I just. It's on every worst Christmas movie list. And I mean, for it's a good on, like, reason. All of them. I, it, it is one of. The most miserable films I've had to Actually, sit through. Actually, here's one other interesting thing. I, uh, the director's name of this movie is escaping me, but he was, I he was a producer, I think. And sure enough, after I watched this movie, I'm watching uh, some other films with commentary, like Home Alone with commentary, and I'm seeing his name pop up on a lot of good projects. Uh, and even on the commentary, Chris Columbus is saying, you know, he really worked hard in getting this and putting it together and stuff like that, and it's. I get a feeling this was a really good producer. Uh, I guess you know, it's a case of really good producer can't direct, or maybe the script was just so bad there's nothing you could or, do. With or maybe it. the script, you know, I want to say. Because if that script, if, even in the hands of a great comedic director, that'd be really it hard to do, yeah. still would have been a shitty script. Yeah, and it's a bad moral and everything. Uh, I'm almost wondering, because like I said, I haven't read the book. Well, you know what? Okay, I, I feel like the studio came down on this one. Not to say it would have been great to begin with, but it's like the studio came down and said, no, no, we have to make the people against Christmas look like the bad You know what, guys. though? There are some directing issues. I think what was bothering me the most is the fakiness of that neighborhood. Yeah. Where I'm just like, the fake snow, the fact that it's like supposed to be night, and it's like, what, is the moon like coming closer to the earth like Majora's yeah, Mask? Is so evenly so lit. So overlit, evenly lit, overly bright. I you know, simple mistakes like that after, it's just, it was killing it for me. Like, I'm like, this is, it's supposed to be set in Chicago. It's painfully obvious it was probably shot in L.A. with fake snow. It, it just, I, I will say this, though. It's bugging me. At the end when it was snowing, some of the shots they got in the neighborhood with all the lights and the snow and stuff, that kind of looked nice. I almost looked That was nice, the but, but the other scenes, like, just in the neighborhood, I don't know, the whole thing just, I'm like, this feels so fake. Yeah, it, it did not like, feel like Chicago. Um, and, and you know we pointed out maybe like, they shot some of it in Chicago, but I I don't know what it is. If it was shot in Chicago, then I'm like it did. It didn't look like it didn't it didn't it, look like it didn't feel like it. In which case, double fail. So you know, and a part of me is thinking, man, what a good detail to get sort of the almost melted snow because that's something you see a lot in Chicago. But it was so random where it was placed, and they never yeah, think about it, like again. You just never notice that you're picking this up. But it's like the sun hits the ground in certain ways and roofs blocking that. Outside a house, you well, there's a certain like mathematics things, to how the Simple things out. like they would have just random little piles in the yards, but there would be no piles along the side of the street where the plows yeah, would have come or where, where they would have shoved like a, Yeah, I'm I like, mean, 
it, it's so funny, you don't think you would pick up now, on to that. to be fair, we're only saying this because the movie's so bad that we noticed Yeah, it. that's like, what we're Like, if looking. this were a good movie, I wouldn't have given a shit, but... <laughs> but it's just another thing to hate! Um, yeah, so... The inex oh, the inexplicable ending, where it's like, yep, yeah, I'm Santa Claus, I'm riding off in the Volkswagen. I, th th my jaw just dropped. I was like, I'm like, what the f <laughs> fuck am I watching? What is this? And then the snowman wave. It's like, yeah, it's one of those things where it's like every time you're in the last five seconds, just when you think you can't get stupid, it throws like three or four more dumb things at you. That's like, how did you do that? How did you get dumber in the matter of a couple seconds? It's literally like the whole crew just had a mental breakdown in the last five seconds. Like, no, let's have the snowman wave. Let's have him take off in a Volkswagen Let's just see if we can make this like, as bad as possible. As stupidly dumb as possible. There, it was almost like a checklist. Did we miss anything? We had Santa flying away in a Volkswagen. <laughs> yeah, snowman we had snowman waving. Snowman waving. It's the end. A little sparkles. Like, it just... Oh! <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> oh! Bad. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, this movie sucks. <laughs> yeah, and, it, and it's really bad. And it, it pisses and if me off because it's a such dark, a good yeah, setup. If you wanted a dark satire on the dark side of Christmas, it, you know, you could do it. The fact that they said it, I think it's supposed to be in Riverside or something, which if you live in this area, like, that makes total sense. Yeah, like, it, it feels like one of those ritzy western suburbs, like, and I could totally see this happening in, like, Oak Park or Forest Park or what he's like. But the thing is, it, it just wasn't done well. What like, a good satire this could have been. It, it totally could have been. I, I think that's what pisses me off even more, because it's not like, oh, this idea was dead on arrival. It's a good yeah. idea. And I love Christmas, but I hate assholes that ruin Christmas for everybody. But it's like, no, you have to do this. Like, Starbucks is taking Jesus out of Christmas coffee. And like... I hate that shit. It's like, who gives a fuck? Well, Grow that, up. Well, no, and I, I love Christmas, too, And a dark too, satire, obviously. that would have been great. I, I love Christmas, too, obviously, which is why I get even more upset when people do it so poorly and focus on the wrong things. Uh, you know, when they but they claim, no, it's because I love Christmas. No, it's not. If you're focusing on stupid little details and not the message of love and togetherness and stuff, you don't love Christmas. <laughs> it's about love and togetherness, not shaming others. Yeah. Oh, the way, same thing goes for Christianity altogether. Yeah. It's about love and togetherness, not shaming others. So, yeah, there's our deep stupid message. Stupid movie. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what this movie does to us. So, um, yeah, that's about it. Um, fuck this movie. Sh you know what? I just realized there was an irony that we said that and we're totally shaming this movie, but... It deserves yeah. it. It has nothing to do with Christmas, so it's okay.